the most prolific serial killer in U.S. history, is now officially linked to two more murders in Miami-Dade County. Last year, following an explosive 60 Minutes report on the serial killer who confessed to 93 murders. CBS 4's Peter Dench spoke to a veteran Miami-Dade police detective who interviewed Samuel Little about the five women he confessed to killing in Miami-Dade. Here's part of that report. He was a older gentleman and uh, had very light eyes, so he was easy to speak to. He has corroborated two of the five Miami-Dade murders Little has confessed to. 25-year-old Miriam Chapman, also known as Angela, who Denmark said was mentally ill and a prostitute who frequented Liberty City's Turf Motel. Her body was found in a field in May 1976 near these memorable arches off Tamiami Trail just east of Chrome Avenue. Uh, Angela Chapman, um, he strangled in the beginning, then he put her in a body of water, which is located by those arches in the Everglades. The expanse of Everglades was stunning beauty and dark and forbidding secrets. And 34-year-old Mary Brosley from Boston, who Chapman said was separated from her family and suffered from alcoholism. Her remains were discovered in June of 1971 in a field near Northwest 107th Avenue and 162nd Street, a remote area like the Everglades. Denmark says Little also claimed he murdered Air Force nurse Karen O'Donoghue in 1966 or 1967 and showed this painting of the victim whose body has never been found. And he painted another woman who he said was named Sarah or Donna and was from Cuba. Joining us now is Miami Herald reporter David Ovalle. And David has uncovered new information in this already stunning story. David, what's the new headline here? Well, the newest headline is that the state, uh, along with Miami and Miami-Dade Police, has closed two cases, um, including the one of Karen, uh, Karen O'Donoghue, as well as uh, another one that happened in June of 1977, and uh, the victim's name was Dorothy Gibson. Um, but the interesting thing about this case was there actually was an arrest in this case originally back in 1979. City of Miami police arrested a man named Jerry Frank Townsend. Um, and he was someone who had gone, uh, uh, been, been uh, arrested for six murders and put away and sent to prison for life. He ended up doing 22 years in prison before it was discovered that he actually had been um, uh, implicated wrongly. He had falsely confessed, been prodded, and basically coerced into confessing. And DNA uh, actually exonerated him in two of the cases in Broward. This is a really big story back in the uh, early 2000s in South Florida, and he ended up getting uh, over four million in settlements out of Broward and the city of Miami. So now we have a little bit of clarity on who actually was to blame for at least one of the murders that he went to. Sad that it took so long to clear his name. Now, David, what do we know about these two local victims at this point? Well. Karen, in the latest two cases, Karen was actually very similar to Mary Brosley. She was someone from uh, from Massachusetts, and they believe she came down here, possibly even with Brosley. Um, but what was interesting about that case was that Samuel Little knew some real intimate details that uh, about her life, that she had been a nurse, that she had had certain medical issues. Um, he remembered a lot of things about her that led the authorities to conclude that it was definitely her. They have not been able to find her body. They suspect it's probably out in the Everglades somewhere. Um, and as for Dorothy Gibson, she was 17. She was a runaway um, from here in Miami, and she was found uh, in, uh, strangled in a, um, in a field um, next to the old Greyhound uh, bus depot in downtown Miami in 1977. He, he preyed on these vulnerable women, and now he talks about it so matter-of-factly. It's so difficult to understand. Also hard to understand. There won't be any charges here, David. Why is that? Well, the state attorney's office has decided that basically it would be sort of a long shot to actually get him here to stand trial. I mean, with at least 93 convictions, um, confessions, um, 60 that they've been able to corroborate, more than 60 they've been able to corroborate, um, he's going to be in prison for the rest of his life in uh, in in California. He's also uh, facing trial in in other states. He recently uh, co uh, confessed to some in Ohio as well. So basically, they would have to get in line. So they decided, well, you know, they can always go back, and if they absolutely need to, they can try to file charges. Um, but at this point, just the possibility of actually getting him here 
to to stand trial is just sort of a re remote chance at this point. So they decided for the next of kin to have some closure that they're going to go ahead and just close them as exceptionally cleared. David, tell us more about Jerry Frank Townsend. Well, Jerry was a man who had a very low IQ, um, about 58 or less, um, and he was someone that um, basically was sort of a drifter type, um, odd, odd jobs back in the, uh, in the 70s, and he was arrested initially for a rape in downtown Miami, or for a suspected rape. He was someone that was caught like a couple blocks away from the scene, and basically over over um, hours. I mean, this is just like two days worth of interviews with detectives from the city of Miami and from Broward. They just started closing cases. Um, and then in the early 2000s, um, it came to light that DNA actually implicated another serial killer up in Broward County for two of the cases up there. Um, and then when city of Miami, there was um, some homicide detectives that went through and reviewed all the confessions and found um, basically concluded that he had just been fed all the information. Um, so in the end, they ended up uh, dropping all the charges. And even back in 2001, then Sheriff Ken Jenny actually um, officially apologized to to Jerry. And he's still alive now. He's still he's still up. Uh, he's living up in Georgia with his daughter. But yeah, he it was a really tragic case, a miscarriage of justice. Well, finally, some justice for all involved and hopefully some closures for those families. David, thank you for your time and for your insight this evening. Thank you. Thank you, David.